Flaming women riders! Sorry, I didn't see you. Are you all right? Uh, nearly. They won't worry about me. You frightened them to death and all. Spending a night in one of your snares probably didn't do the poor thing much good either. Mm. You're spending too much time with that Nick Ronan. You're beginning to sound like him. Ooh. See the duck? Hey, duck. Quack, quack. In the duck. Nick! Breakfast. Oh, thanks, honey. A slice of toast would have been fine. Oh, you need a good breakfast inside, you? Nick, um, I've been thinking of getting a little job. Oh, yeah? To get me out of the house a bit. But it'd only be a couple of hours a day, and Rita's quite happy to look after Katie. You know she's reliable, so you didn't have any worries on that score. Eileen, I think it's an excellent idea. So you don't mind? No. Well, what is this job? And where's whole pounds in and balls of vicious bouncer? You didn't move your feet. Oh, come on, lad. I want a good coat of oil on that bat. Look after your tools and they'll look after you, right? Tell her a piece of four bob the brace. And if you're interested, first of all, it's not the only thing I can supply. Uh, you'd best come into the office. Uh -huh. Hello? Oh, hello, Mick. Yes, I did call. I've got a couple of cracking mares I'd like you to put that stallion of yours to. How much? I can't afford that. Well, can't you do better? No. No, it's too much. You would not believe what they're asking for stud fees nowadays. Are you having these? What else can you supply apart from pheasant? Oh, you're right. Salmon, venison, oak. Right. You're on. And if you get a decent thoroughbred stallion in your snare, give me a shout. <laughs> My name is Jack and I live in the back of the Grand Turcabo home With friends I will remember wherever I may roam Mr. Rowan? Shouldn't you be at school? I'm poorly. Here, I'm pretty far for someone who's supposed to be poorly. It's toothache. Does your dad know? I didn't want to worry him. You won't tell him, will you? Well, get yourself off to school then. I'll be checking. Well, go on then, Rum. Mr. Arab, you still looking for a stallion for them mares of yours? Well, you just happen to have one, do you? 
Oh, I think I know where I can lay my hands on one. Oh, well, I. When the rag and bone man's finished his rounds. What are you talking about? You don't really think I'd want to share in a fault with half Totter's pony, do you? How dodgy is it? Only nearly won a classic, that's all. Nah, couldn't risk it. From round here, is it? It's for me to know and you to find out. Well, the only horse from round here that did out in a classic were Ashford Lee Lad. Morning. You weren't thinking of stealing him, were you? Not stealing, borrowing. You've got to be joking. Lord Ashford Lee Stallion? Nah. Stick to poaching, Greengrass. Tell me you weren't trying on him, then. Please! Hi. If Mrs. Watkins comes, try to make it look as though you're here on business. Wow. And I thought you came to see me. An added incentive. Has Len Schofield turned up yet? No, why? Well, I caught him hanging around the village this morning. He said he was off school with a toothache, but I asked him not to tell his dad. Oh. I told him to get to school and said I'd check. Aren't kids frightened of bobbies anymore? Well, no, obviously not. Okay, I better go. I see teachers are still afraid of their headmistresses, though. I'll keep my eye open for them. Thanks. All right for tonight? Yeah, I'll see you later. Right, in there, quickly. What do you think you're doing? Just the man. I can't listen, they king sweets. Is that true, then? I was gonna pay for him. So where's your money? I left it at home. Leave this to me, will you, Betty? You're not gonna let him get away with it. I'm gonna talk to his dad. Oh, no, Mr Rowan. Please don't. You can't do that. I can't see Harry Schofield taking kindly to hearing his son's a thief. Please, Mr Rowan, D don't tell me, Dad. We well, should have thought of that when I told you to go to school before. You don't get two chances. Thanks, Betty. Come on. What can I do for you, Nick? A bit more work, you know, my car of yours. No, the car's fine, Harry. Call cool to have a chat about Len. Oh, I. I bumped into him a couple of times this morning. You did? Where? In the village. He was playing truant. In what? Well, I gave him a warning, packed him off to school. What the heck was he doing? He loves school, he's always done well. What well, trouble is, he didn't go. He decided to help himself to some sweets from the village store instead. Nick him? Nah. He wouldn't dare. He was caught red-handed, I'm afraid. Little beggar. Where is he now? At school. I've let him off with a warning, but can you have a word with him? You can bet your house on that, Mr Rowan. Mm. This is really nice, Gina. You're a good cook. I didn't make it. I've got a new chef. Not another one who thinks he's God's gift to women, I hope. Well, it's all about me again. The new kook. That's why I'm here. How's she getting on? She? Everything all right, Phil? Eileen, if you ever get fed up of looking after Nick and Katie, you can run away with me. <laughs> hey, hands off, Phil. She's mine. <laughs> it's a few years since handsome young men were arguing over me. Get your sandwich, Nick. Yes, please. Sergeant Blake to know you're frequenting public houses in your delivery. Uh, well, you see, that's a secret between you and me and a packet of strong links. Um, tell that business earlier. What exactly have you got in mind? What I've got in mind is going to ignore the pub. This one's getting too full of coppers. Mm. Hey, Nick, have a word with that skull two through yours. Her and a flaming hoss, she nearly killed me this morning. My desk, miss. Len Schofield. Yes, miss. Was it you? No, miss. 
Empty out your pockets. Where is it? Where's what, miss? The spider. What spider? Roll up your sleeves. Oh, miss. Now. <laughs> Where did you get these bruises? <clears throat> Playing cricket, miss. I'm not stupid, Len. This isn't the cricket season. Honest. When did you pay, bruv? Let's see if a Libran's gonna get lucky, or I'll pull a Pisces tonight. What's that, Magina, then? We're just good friends, apparently. Give it back. The sporting life. The uh, paper lad, he delivered it by mistake. Well, don't they do horoscopes, Alf? Yeah, they call them tips in there, they're about as accurate. <laughs> Give it back! And don't take out of mine again. I'll tell you your fortune, Bellamy. You don't even need to cross my palm with silver. Don't suppose it involves a beautiful girl, Sarge? Not quite. A few hundred acres of woodland, a riverbank, and lurking in the undergrowth, green grass. You'll hardly notice the difference, Phil. Lord Ashford is being plagued by poachers again, and I've told him we'll do something about it tonight. It's not really theft, though, is it? I mean, we're only borrowing the odds. I haven't agreed to it yet. Be a right giggle to own the offspring of an oss that won the Sun Ledger. He was fourth. I know, we only had three in front of him. There he is. Where's he stabled? Don't worry, it's far enough away from the house. They won't dare us. We won't be able to put Ashfordly lad down as the sire. No matter, does it? There were thousands once to start winning. Can we go out to play, Mr. Scofield? Not tonight, Billy. Please, Dad. Just for half an hour. Oh, no. We're going to spend half an hour talking about why you weren't in school this morning. If it takes less than half an hour, you then tell me why you've been stealing from a village shop. I'm sorry, Dad. Not as sorry as you will be. How are you going to make out of yourself with your criminal record? I won't do it again. Too damn right you won't. Out that's worth having's worth grafting for. Seems you haven't been listening. Sorry I can't come out tonight. Mrs Watkins lumbered me with this for the school concert. <laughs> How about tomorrow? Yeah, sure. So you gave old Greengrass a bit of a fright this morning, did you? <laughs> you have to give me some lessons. I can't even get Len Schofield back to school. That boy worries me, Nick. He used to be top of the class, according to his reports. Now he's just a troublemaker. Well, I've had a word with his dad this morning. Perhaps he'll talk some sense into him. I was wondering if he might be part of the problem. Why is that? He came to school with some nasty bruises today. Said he got them playing cricket. What, this time of year? Yeah, better than admitting your dad beats you up. Oh, come on, you don't know that. Boys get bruises all the time, don't they? Well, I hope you're right. There's no mum around, is there? No, no, she died a few years ago. Well, I'm going to keep a close eye on him from now on. Should we go riding first? Eh? Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, all right. Problem? No. No, there's nothing to it, is there? You just sit there and let the horse do all the work. <laughs> Don't make a row. I'll be quieter than your clutch. Fetch the horse. What about you? I'll get box ready. I've got a reputation to think of. Oh, the racehorse trainer has not won a lot. Get on with it. <laughs> now then, son, it's your birthday. Have I got a present for you?
Come on, lad. Seven o'clock, I want you downstairs sharpish. I've got lots to do before school. Come on. All right, come on, son. Come and meet the wife. Good lad. Good lad. That's it. That's it. Four years from now, your kid will be winning the derby. Come on, son. I wish I'd never agreed to this. Yeah. So long, of course, that's friendly lad here does his stuff. Don't go shouting his name like that. You won't say that when we're walking around the royal enclosure at Ascot. As long as we don't end up in Her Majesty's prison. Stop worrying. We'll have him back before anybody knows he's missing. Come on. The darts team at the Aidensfield Arms was too short for tonight, have So I put our names down. Well, I can't make it. They're counting on you. I said I've got some on. Why can't you play? Previous engagement. I wouldn't play darts if I had a date with Joe Weston. Come on, Alf. You never have anything on midweek. I said no! Where me? Sarge. All quiet at Lord Ashford's last night, was it? Yes, Sarge. Counted every fish in the river, every pheasant in the wood. And horses? Horses, Sarge. Aye. Cos while you were playing I Spy on the river bank, somebody sneaked in and nicked his lordship's valuable racehorse. Len, I want you at the front. Sort places with Susan, please. Oh, do I have to? Yes, you do. Have you been fighting? No, miss. When did that happen? It was an accident at home. Right. Today we're going to talk about myths and legends. Does anybody know any? Len Schofield was named after a legend. Is that right, Len? Yes, miss. Len Hutton. Yes. Well, does anybody know the story of Pegasus, the flying horse? We'll be implementing a search for the horse immediately, sir. Thank you, Blaketon. Tell me, uh... I don't suppose either of you gentlemen are averse to a little bet now and again? Sir? Tip for you. Cooper's Folly in the 4.15 at Weatherby. Oh, well, uh, thank you, sir. It's not very good odds. It's carrying top weight. I've had a whisper of my own, sir. Uh, not that if it's any interest to me, of course. The Skipper's Bridge, second favourite. I don't think his lordship wants to know where your window cleaner sticks his lucky pin, Ventris. Just thought I'd mention it. I'll bear it in mind, Constable. I'll await word on Ashley Lad Blake and keep me informed. Right, sir. Since when have you know more about horse racing than the gentry? I mean, these people know. You'll be having a bet then, will you, Sarge? Well, I'm not a gambling man, as you know, but I think in these circumstances it'd be rude not to. Sixpence each way shouldn't come amiss. Uh, entry, sir. Do you know how to put on a bet? I'll manage. I might even have a tenner on myself and all. <laughs> Lenny was such a nice little boy when I took him. Very bright. He's bright enough. He just doesn't seem interested. Could it be something to do with your teaching methods, Joanna? The other children seem happy enough, Mrs Watkins. What's his father like? He's what they call a man's man. If Len's behaving at home like he is at school, it won't go down well with Harry Schofield. Could that explain the bruises and today's black eye? It's possible, I suppose. So what do we do? There's nothing much we can do, even if we wanted. I don't encourage the parents beyond the school gates. By the same token, I don't interfere with the home lives of our pupils. But if they're being beaten up, surely we have a duty... Joanna, this is a hard community. Physical punishment is a fact of life. And if that's the way the parents want to discipline their children, there's nothing much we can do about it. What's so funny? I can't believe I actually managed to get you on a horse. Yeah, well, Kate would have been very impressed. Did she ride? Yeah, she did a bit when she was a kid. It's something we always meant to do when we first moved up here. What stopped you? Well, boring things like work got in the way. 
Never found the time somehow. She'd be the first to congratulate you. Len Schofield turned up today. Came to school with a black eye. How'd he get that? According to Len, it was an accident. You think it was his dad again? It's too much of a coincidence, Nick, surely. What are you going to do? According to my dear headmistress, nothing. Well, she's not concerned. Physical punishment is par for the course, she says. But I'm not letting it go, Nick. Come on, let's trot. You know what to do, squeeze your knees. Come on. Come on, let's get him back to where he belongs. Uh, could have gone better than could it, eh? Who's a clever daddy? <laughs> The local boy in blue. You take care of him, I'll hide the off. Well, it's not often we see you up this way, Constable. No, I just wanted to warn you there might be some horse thieves in the area. Lord Ashford's stallion was stolen last night. Was it? I haven't heard out about it. Well, I thought I'd better let you know. If someone is stealing horses, they might well try here next. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a lively one there. Oh, hi. Well, it's very good of you to tip me off, Constable. Well, it's a pleasure. Bye, then. Any look at the stables, Bellamy? Not as far as stolen horses go, Sarge. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I didn't realise how many good-looking girls work with horses. I'm thinking of taking up riding, Sarge. Rotten tip, Sarge. You lost by a mile. Oh, well, just a bit of fun to liven up a dull afternoon, eh? Ashfordley, please. Yes, my lord. Lord Ashfordley. He'll be wanting a progress report. Not for you, Sarge. He wants the king of the tipsters. Alf? You see Ventress? Oh, did you? Congratulations. No. No, the sergeant and I put sixpence each way on Cooper's folly. Oh, yes. Should I get another cert? You'll be the first to know, sir. Well, I bat my tip. He came in at 16 to 1. He made a packet. But if Mrs Watkins won't get involved, there's not much you can do. There must be something. If Len's dad is beating him, I can't just ignore it. But can't you do something? Well, unless an official complaint is made, it's not a police matter. According to Mrs Watkins, it isn't a school matter. How long before it becomes a hospital matter, Nick? Look, I'll have a word with Harry. Let him know we're concerned. Well, do you really think that'll be enough? Well, you can talk to Maggie. Get her to have a look at Len. That's a good idea. I could see if she can come over tomorrow while I'm taking them for football. You take football? Yes, I know the rules. Well, most of them. Now, just remember everything I've taught you and you'll be fine. Right, off you go. Oh, Len. You've been eating these. I thought we had enough money, Dad. Oh, I've been saving up. It's important, son. Come on. You know well, it could be Yorkshire Colts next. Brian Close will play for England when he was 17. I know, you said. Oh, well, that's just six years off, and with all the coaching I've been giving you. Yeah. Don't let me down, son. I'm counting on you. There he is, Mr. Clark. Hello, Len. Your dad's told me great things about you. Let's see what you can do. Off you go, lad. You've got to do something. We've got to get this ruddy stallion back. We can't. The place will be crawling with coppers. Look, you just leave it another day, trust me. Is it serious stuff, this card school you got tonight? Gambling's always serious, especially when Charlie Wallace is playing. Charlie Wallace? Right. He's worth thousands. I mean, it's a bit dangerous, isn't it, playing cards with him? Who else is coming? Oh, well, hello, Alf. Come in. Evening. What's he doing here? Um. Well, uh, he's not, um... I think the word you're looking for is stopping, cos I'm going. Didn't know we got friends in common, Elf. 
We have nothing in common, Greengrass. You don't even know me. Do you understand? Oh, yes. My lips are sealed, Mr Ventress. <laughs> Head over the ball, Len. Elbow up. Get in line. I'm um, sorry, Mr. Schofield. He really looks the part, but he just hasn't got what he takes. Oh, he's having an off night. Just nerve. You should have seen him last season. You've coached him very well. It's nice to see a young lad playing so correctly. But without an eye for the ball, it means an out. I'm sorry, I can't take him on. Looks like Alf's got a good one. I'm out. Charlie? I don't frighten that easily. I see you and raise you a pound. Last summer you would have smashed them out of the nets. Maybe with this black eye. They were bowling right fast. You were trying. Maybe you wanted to fail. So you can play football after school with all the other no hopers. Maybe I'm wasting my time. I'm in money. I'm sorry, Dad. Sorry? Apart from wasting that coach's time, you made. You made me look a right fool. I see you. Raised you two pounds. Perfect. You're getting into my stakes too easy tonight, Charlie. It's only money. It's just you and me again, Sherlock. Up to you. See you. I'll raise you five. See your five. Raise you ten pounds. Ten. If you don't think your cards are good enough, Alf, just throw them in. I best see you. Cost you more than a week's wages on there. See you. Pair of aces. Well, that's all. You bet that on a pair of aces. And another pair of aces. Can you beat four of a kind, Alf? <laughs> Well, if you hear any gossip, let me know. Lord Ashley might even stamp up a reward. Yeah, well, I do get one or two horses for showing, so you might be lucky. How's Len? I've had a word with him. He won't be messing about anymore. I hear he's got a real shiner. That's what this is all about, isn't it? It's got nothing to do with your horses. Look, don't be like that, Harry. We are looking for the horse. I'm just a bit concerned that he turned up with a black eye the day after a bit of bother. Mind your own flaming business. We want to be all right this time. I don't know if I'm actually the first thing I want anybody about. Flipping heck. 
Here's another one. I'll make myself scarce. Mr. Harrop, E.T. Bellamy from Ashfordley. What's Green Grass doing up here? Um, I was trying to pick up a few tips, of course. What can I do for you? Well, you might have heard about this racehorse that's gone missing. Heard? Nick Rowan, Alf Ventress, and now you. You'll be bumping into each other next. Well, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know they'd been up already. Well, for the third time, I don't know anything about it. Well, I'm uh, sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Harrop. Thank you. So what did he say when you asked him about the bruises? Everyone an accident, even the black eye. I'm worried about his behaviour in class too, blowing you up. He just doesn't seem interested. He's got no concentration. Sorry, Mist, I crossed it for to head. You're gonna make a centre forward then if you don't learn to head. I didn't see it coming. Are you all right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Right, five more minutes. Uh, not you then. There's something I want you to do for me. Do I have to? Miss? Well, let's take a second. All right. Can you read me that number plate? Bit fuzzy. All right then. Go closer. Two steps. Keep on going until you can read the number plate. EVS 491A. All right then, Len. Well done. Is that it? Yeah, for the moment. Uh, you go and finish the game. But I want to see you in the secretary's office after dinner. There's a chart I want you to look at. There's definitely something wrong with his eyesight. Oh, it's good to see you two here, instead of out doing my job. Hey, I'm supposed to be doing the stables. When I called on Mr Harrop today, he tells me I wasn't even the second Bobby to dock on his door. Oh, no, no, no. I was the third. Yeah, sorry, Phil. Uh, Joe and I were passing there yesterday. Just thought we'd pop in a morning. What about you, Elf? Were you just passing as well? Mind your own business. Keep your hair on. What's the matter with you nowadays? There you go again, sticking your nose in. Hey, all right, take it easy, Alf. What's up? You got plates on your back? No. Should it be? It's personal. OK. Anything we can do? No, there isn't. Tell her. Uh, come in. Take a seat. Oh. Sorry about mess. It wasn't as I was expecting you. That's all right, Mr. Schofield. Why don't you sit down? All right. All right, well. Mrs. Bolton and I wanted a word with you about a couple of things. I'm worried about Len. His schoolwork hasn't been as good as it should be. He's a bright boy, Mr. Schofield. And judging by his previous record, he should be doing far better. Who do you want me to have a word with you? Just wondering if there was any reason for changing his behaviour. Do you have any problems with him at home? No, never. He's a good lad. We thought he might have been getting into a few scrapes. I couldn't help noticing the bruises that he's picked up lately. You're friendly with Nick Rowan, aren't you? Well, yes, but... Yeah, well, if you're all so desperate to know, I never laid a finger on the lad. got his black eye whilst we were practising his batting. I was tossing a golf ball up for him. I thought if he could hit that, a cricket ball would be like a balloon. But he couldn't. I waste of time. I thought he had the meckings around it, and I was killing myself. So this cricket thing's serious, then? Aye. Well, even for a little lad, he could smack a ball. He had timing. So you want him to play professionally? Aye. So he won't have to struggle like me. You see... My father was a friend of Lennon, who played for England. Now, he was something special. Now, is there out wrong with me wanting my lad to be like that? No, but 
Is it what Len wants? Oh, of course. Well, he knows talents now without discipline. And now he's got the discipline, but no talent. His eyes, Mr. Schofield. I gave him a test today. Len needs glasses. Glasses? His eyesight must have deteriorated quite rapidly. Can happen at that age. Well, if he can't see the ball, he'll never be a cricketer. Not a good one, anyhow. It's all I've ever wanted for him. You left this. Then why didn't you call me earlier? Because... Well, because I thought he'd come home on his own. And all this stuff about me hitting him, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't, Nick, I promise. Have you checked his friends? Everybody I can think of. He hasn't been seen since he left school. Freezing out there. Could he have gone to a relative? Well, there's only me and him around here. Why would he run off? Well, you can talk to him about that once we get him back. organising locals in Aidensfield to search the village. Now, the chances are the lad will have stayed close to home and they'll find him. He won't last long if he's gone further afield. Now, you've all got maps. Ventress will lead one group and I'll lead the other. Right then, let's go. Yeah. Right. Right, Roland's here again. He must be on a flip of the elastic. Hey. Harry Schofield's lad's gone missing. He's run away from home. How long's he been gone? Since last night. Well, I've not seen him up this way, sorry. We might be hiding him under your barns or boxes. Oh, well, we'd better go and have a look then straight away. Well, he's not been in the stables because we've already mocked him out. Uh, no, but perhaps he might be in one of the barns, Mr. Harrop. Yeah, all right. If you see him, let me know. Thanks. Now what do we do? The place will be overrun with coppers again looking for the kid. I'll give him a couple of hours to search Aiden's field, and then we can let the Oscar go and find his own way home. Claude, it's not a flaming homing pigeon. Blowing my clock with you and Nick yesterday. I'm sorry. Forget it. 
Do you think you can lend us ten bob until payday? Can't help you, mate. I'm skint. Skint? After all the overtime that you've been working. <laughs> An expensive life being a bachelor boy, Alf. Only I've had a bit of a tip. It's a sure thing. You'll get your money back this afternoon, with interest. Well, if I had it, I'd lend it, Alf. You know that. Stop it. Alf? Now, Len's not in any trouble, but he's run away from home. I want you to think if there's anywhere that he might have gone. Many times I've been alone And many times I've cried Anyway, you've always known In many ways I've tried But still they lead me back time ago Don't keep me standing here Lead me to your door According to your Miss Weston the lad might be up at Rowley Woods. I know the place, Sarge. There's an old summer house there. I'll take a look. Well, go on, get off home, you daft apeth. Go on. Hey. Oh, we'll have to get him closer to Ashfordley Hall. Leave him here, he'll like us not come back to my place. Right, well, we'd better go by a back road, but we should be all right. I mean, I mean, if any copper stoppers, what's more natural than an ospian in an os box? Yeah, makes sense. Uh, mind you, it'd pro probably be better if I didn't come with you, because for some reason the coppers are a bit suspicious of me. Claude, you're coming. What's that? Looks like a kid. Hang on. We can't. We've got to get the stallion back. Stop the van or I'll stop it for you. Tell Schofield, man. We can ring the police. Anonymous. Tell him where he is. You're talking, I can't leave me. I've got to get into hospital or something. Come on, give me a hand. Well, don't just stand there, come on. You get that in. Should I keep on driving? Don't be mental, stop the van. I think it's the Schofield lad. We found him lying in the road. Is he all right? No, he's unconscious. We're taking him to hospital. I'll radio ahead. Follow me. Well, come on, let's go inside. Where is he? He's in there. I'll check him. It's a bit of an end. Uh, have you got him? Come on, lad. Right, I've got him. Oh. Come on, sir. All right, sir. Right. Let's get moving before they come back. Uh, dump the arse and we're laughing. We'll never be able to prove we've had it. Well, come on. What's up with you? So 
So it was Greengrass who found him, was it? Yeah, him and Josh Harrop, Sarge. They're in his horse box on that back road to the Ashford Lee estate. Excuse me a minute, Sarge. Right. Out. And you, Mr. Harrop. Come on. What have you got in the back? Um, horse. What do you think we've got in there? A camel? Is it yours? Uh. Well, whose is it then? It were all his idea. What are you talking about? Well, what would I want with a resource? To win the derby, you said. Remember. Oh, come on, mate. I mean, can't you? I mean, we're, we're, I'm an hero, ain't I? I mean, we both are. I mean, you had hundreds of blokes looking for that kid, dogs of the lot, but we were the ones that found him. What's all that got to do with the theft of Lord Ashwell's horse? We were just taking him back. Well, you better get a move on, then. Well, we can't. The engine's gone. We'll start walking. Walking? With my knees, it's nearly five miles. If that horse is back within two hours, we might just forget it ever went missing. Two hours? It'll take us that long to get it out of the box. You haven't got time to argue, Claude. Start walking. Everything's going to be all right from now on, then, man. Better than ever. I'm sorry, Dad. No. It's me as ought to be sorry. I should never have pushed you so hard. I was only trying my best. You reckon you can forgive me? Hello, Len. How are you feeling? OK, miss. We're going to have to decide what glasses you're going to have to have, then, lad. Well, I don't want them that make me look like the Milky Bar kid. As long as you can see the blackboard. Yeah, and a cricket ball. Maybe skip those reinforced ones. Save yourself another black eye. Dad says I can play in glasses. Is he right? Well, yeah. Well, what about that new opener for Yorkshire? He wears glasses. Oh, Jeffrey Boycott? Well, he's not bad. Oh, Len will be better than that. That's if he wants to be my lips. It's up to him. You might not be pushing him anymore, Mr Schofield, but I will be. He's got a bit of catching up to do with the schoolwork. Mm. I really never thought I'd see you again, old chap. Where exactly did you say you found him? Um, on the moors, wasn't it, Claude? Oh, yes, yeah. Any idea where he'd been? Uh, uh, no, not exactly, but wherever it was, he'd, he'd been very well looked after, my lord. You know... I'd like to give you gentlemen some sort of reward. You've no idea how much the lad here means to me. Very kind of you. I don't think there's any need for that, sir. If we could just have a word. I'm, I'm going to ask him if he'll put his stallion to your mares. But we've already... I know, I, I know that, but if we can do it officially, you can put Ashford Lad's name on the papers. That way, the falls will be worth a fortune. Oh, I think I've been too harsh, Blake, and gentlemen. I, I, I don't want to talk for myself, my lord. I knew he was up to summit. But, but Mr Arup here's got a couple of lovely mares, and I thought it might be a nice idea if you were to put your stallion to his mares without a stud fee. Well, an excellent idea, Mr Greengrass, sir. But it wouldn't be much use, I'm afraid. As I told the police, he's never been a stud horse. Oh, well, it's never too late to start, is it? Ashfordly lad is sterile, Claude. He only fires blanks. <laughs> 